Welcome back to the Pop Culture Corner Podcast. Today, we have uh, someone new, uh, someone fresh, and uh, we have a lot to talk about, a lot to discuss. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to make sure that we're uh, plug plugging everything. Actually, it's funny because we just talked about it. So guys, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel, or follow it if you're listening on the podcast, uh, and then become a member uh, to gain access to tons of different exclusives, uh, including behind the scenes content. Uh, early access to podcasts, discounted merchandise, and all that good stuff. All right, so today, like I said, we have uh, uh, our friend Sill. How you doing, man? Doing great, doing great. Happy to be here. Yeah. Um, so we saw the Suicide Squad last night. And uh, is that something you're looking forward to? I know you're a DC guy, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm DC, so like I'm going to watch anything DC, right? Yeah. Um, my hype level for this, though, um, was pretty like you know you know like medium but now some of my i have you know, friends in the uk you know through social media and they're raving about it uh mm -hmm. people that i you know kind of you know communicate with um so they kind of put like real people behind those reviews and i'm like oh this may be a pretty good movie you know yeah so. i um i actually just reviewed it as well um mm -hmm. for for gww and then uh i mean it was a great movie man like it was refreshing yeah. it was super cool. refreshing it was uh it was unlike anything else in the DC extended universe, so it was nice to see. Um, mm. But you know, it's 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 not the Snyderverse. So, <laughs> right, right. So some people get upset, and you know, it's 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 tough. It's tough. How? Yeah. Where do you stand with that? Where do you stand with the the Snyderverse? Mm -hmm. And I mean, is that something you're interested in? Mm -hmm. Just yeah, to get definitely. to know you a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, on, you know, on my channel, uh, Still Up Doing on, on YouTube and and Twitch. Um, yeah, basically, you know, it's all about. Uh, I come from the mindset of hardcore DC, um, all kinds of Zack Snyder info I put in the show, and then I highlight. I always say when Warner Brothers messes up, we make that like a, a highlight of, of some of our videos. <laughs> so, uh, so that covers like what most of my content. So this falls right into there. I mean, it's DC. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I love the Snyderverse. Like, obviously, you know, I, you know my channel really started because I was kind of a part of the movement. That's kind of what got me noticed on YouTube. Um, and so, you know, so I did, you know, a lot of people benefited from the fandom. I, I did in that way. Um, and I now, know. you know you know what I'm saying? I mean, and I think that's a good thing. Like we put a lot of awareness, like people, now I get messages from people, like they have these different charity um, events and they see how the fandom was so big, you know, AFSP and still yeah. is. Um, and so, that's cool that that's like one of the trademarks of the fandom is that, you know, it was for things like that for charity. So yep. I, like I said, we've all benefited from it in our own way, but, um, but yeah, now it's like, I don't mind other DC though. I think that's like, that's where something it's kind of like a split in the fandom where some is just Snyderverse or nothing. I'm like, no Snyderverse. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch, I'll watch some other shit too. Like, I mean, I, you know, I, I love DC, <laughs> yeah. but not a Mar not a Marvel guy, huh? I, I check out some Marvel too, but um, it's always from the standpoint of of, of hardcore DC at all times. But um, oh, but we, yeah. we on my channel um, we did like some uh, I mean like I'm a big Spider Man fan, so yeah. I follow stuff like that. And um, you know I watched like the Disney Plus shows. I was a huge fan of Loki. So Loki I mean, I, was I, so good, man. Oh yeah. my god! If I it's mean, good, I'm down for it. Yeah. All right. See, I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. So mm -hmm. how'd you how'd you get your start, man? Like what? How'd you <laughs> how'd you just to, like I said, we're just trying to get to get you know get, yeah. get to know each other and stuff. So how'd you how'd you come up? Like why why did you turn into a, a YouTuber podcast or whatever you want to call it? Uh, right. Why, why did you get into this? Uh, is, yeah. Is it, how'd you do that? That's the million dollar question, right? Um, you know, uh, early what twenty twenty, like most of the world, I was uh, furloughed from my job, so I was just at home, and I always was thinking about. Like, ah, oh, if I could start a video, like, what could blow up a channel? Like, what, you know, I was going to do gaming. I was going to do 
you know, just like just talking movies and stuff like that. But I was like, I didn't have an angle, right? And so I went on the um uh on Twitter, the RT Snyder Cut um uh, account. Yeah. Um uh, people have different feelings about everyone on Twitter, who, uh, but yeah, and I know who runs <laughs> it, I know who yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. they they basically put out a call for four people to do the round table, right? And I just kind of threw it, you know, they said just respond here, we may pick you. I got picked, and like like literally the rest is history from there. Cause like once I got on the round table, I was like, oh, I'm just like, oh, I could do this shit, right? Like, it's nice, right? Uh, yeah, I'm like, you know, kind of because it was right after the Snarka was announced, right? Okay. In May 2020. Yep. Um, and you know, everyone was excited about the announcement. We were like, oh, anything's possible now, right? And mm-hmm. uh, and so I was in that round table and I just kind of caught the bug, man. And then um I was streaming with some other guys, uh, like you probably heard of the four nerds. Yes, um, I, I'm, I'm part of the, I'm part of the OG uh, four nerd. It, it used to be four different. Well, yeah. Dawson and Ryan was always there, and then it was you and Nicotina and uh, Zod Rider. Nicotina. Oh no, no, no. yeah, it was you one. and yeah. I'm sorry, it was, it was you and Zod Rider. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's the OG era. OG four nerds. <laughs> <laughs> and once I did that, man, um, you know, that was, that was a weekly show. I thought it was cool, you know, just interviewing different people and just like just getting used to this, right? And so every time I was streaming, uh, people was like, Still, you should start a channel. Like, you really should just start your channel, right? And then um, around that time, I got connected with, with, with Lightcast and his yeah. crew. Um, and it was just like just offer some random stuff, and we'll get more specific if you want to later on that. But um, as far as just how I started, I, I connected with him for nerds. I started my channel, but I did no videos, and I looked up. I had like twenty five subs. I was like, wow, wow. like, hey, hey I, I, I could you know do something. You know, if a few of them show up on a live stream. And so one morning, I finally after DC Fandom, so it took me to August to really do a video. Um, I woke up one day. Got a cup of coffee. And I was like, "What should I call this?" And I was like, uh, "Coffee talk," you know. <laughs> and I yeah. just, I just started the camera. Yeah, it's a good and name. Yeah, yeah, and it, it kind of stuck from there. I'm like, on, I'm on Coffee Talk. Coffee. My next show will be Coffee Talk 80. Um, after that, Coffee Talk Zero. I call it Zero because my camera shut off. It was so much technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, for the show. Like, I oh my like, god! Yeah, I, yo, I am no stranger to technical difficulties, my friend. <laughs> So I yeah, no stranger to that. I know, just winged it, man. You know, it's funny is like because when we did, so I I used to do it. Um, my be, one of my best friends, uh, Justice, um, him and I are the ones who started this, and like we did the first show, and uh, it was pretty nerve wracking. But like <laughs> once we were in it, we didn't yeah. do it live. Like our first one, we didn't do it live because mm. that would have been a joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> like but, mine was. <laughs> yeah, but but we did it. But we did it, and that I fell in love. Mm-hmm. I was like, I love doing this, and like, mm-hmm. you know, for a long time, I couldn't ask, I couldn't answer the question, Tyler. What do you want to do with the rest of your life, or mm-hmm. what do you what do you want to do, to like, what do you want to do, like in, in mm-hmm. life, what what do you want to be known for? Uh, mm-hmm. I can never answer that question. And then that moment that we were, I think we were like halfway through with the podcast. I looked over, and it was just like. I like this. Like we could, you could do this, right? Pop you know, bug, uh, just like you said. That, yeah, it's like that first stream because I was just happy if just like a couple people showed up. Like hell yeah, for the live stream, and I saw I was like 10, 12 people. I was like, whoa! I was like, I'm connecting with people here. Like <laughs> this is cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so, really cool. like I said, it just really the rest was history from there. Like if it if that would just totally just bombed the first time, then I probably just never would have did it again, right? Yeah, right. Uh, but if you see that response, that's what keeps us going. I think is that you see. You're connecting with some type of audience, and it's your audience, right? It's nothing like that. It's yeah, because um, because it could be the same people as other people's audience, mm-hmm. but the audience that you bring to the table is specifically the ones that show up for you. So yeah, yep. um, you yep. know that's that's your audience at that moment, and um, mm-hmm. you're you're absolutely right in saying that that connection with them. I mean, I lost my mother uh, to breast cancer three months ago. Sorry to hear that. And thank you. Um, and the 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 people that came out. To, sit, mm-hmm. to 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 you know like console or 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 right. like, just to say say their piece and be like you know I I feel for you uh, it was absolutely amazing uh, and that's mm-hmm. why we're doing uh, this month all oh, of our proceeds awesome. go to uh, breast cancer charity so guys uh, that's a good segue I know it's yeah. a, kind of a tragic segue but uh, right if you, right if you can if you can donate the uh, the link is in the description below awesome um, 
yeah, so thank you so much. But yeah, so we that that audience feeling like that connection is is truly unique. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because the way it's formulated. Because I did since I started my channel was a late last year. My birthday is, is is in May, right? So it was my first this 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 year this current year was my first time doing like a you know a quote unquote birthday stream, right? And I'm just like <laughs> I'll, I'll just kind of you know just kind of do it and like like you said, it's like your audience, your people you connect with. And it's worldwide, dude. It's a beautiful thing, man. Oh like, my god, yeah. You know, it's like UK, India, India's Latin hot. America, India, yeah, always India up loves, the yeah. yeah. India loves DC. Yep. Like they, they are sure hands do. down like the biggest fans, and so it just it's just fun. It, it becomes fun, man. And you just kind of like so you just kind of connect with people. Hell yeah! I I um speaking of which, with speaking of connecting with people, um so there's um. So, so you you brought up Lightcast. Uh, what do you feel about what's been going on with that? With that, I know I know you're a guy who doesn't like to hide, uh, and you'll say no, your no, piece. No, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. I have a lot to say about, about <laughs> what Lightcast did. Because I was always yeah. friendly with I was friendly with them after you left, mm -hmm. or because you were with the Culture Nerd and. Mm -hmm. But Lightcast and the Culture Nerd, I always see as one thing. They're like the one, same thing. One yeah. entity. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> but believe me, they're the same. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, what do you what have you been thinking about? What's been going mm. on? Yeah, I mean, you know, really, I, I I had a chance to really speak my piece on this, uh, and that was uh, it was refreshing. Um, but just in general, I just just to answer that question, like what I feel about it. Um, I feel like everyone kind of you know sees what I saw for this past year. Yeah. Um, and so. It's uh you know kind of like you know just deserved what I what happened you, so. you know with him and um and you know with me it's like I knew and like I said I know we'll probably get more specific but I was like yeah. I knew that um a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that was going on but with me just kind of building my platform you know I knew my voice wouldn't be the loudest you know with yeah. that right and so uh, it did kind of come to the point where I was waiting for him to mess up because when you are a liar and a con man, you're going to slip up uh, eventually, yeah. right? Uh, and so once it did, I was like, I just wanted to be there to get my shot in on his way out. So, <laughs> so I, I was I was happy doing that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, because it, it sucks. It's I mean, it's it, okay. So it sucks because it sucks, right? And it sucks yeah. because a lot of people got taken advantage of in mm -hmm. in that in in the specific specific angle of it, right? Like the mm -hmm. the the. I mean, I was, I'm referring to something, uh, there was a project that was in the works and I mean, that's really where it all went downhill, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. there was a lot of good people attached to that um, and they got yeah. duped and it kind of, that's why I, I, that's why I asked and asked you to, you know, come do this is because mm -hmm. it's like a compare and contrast to your story with them, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's kind of the same, some similar in the same thing, mm -hmm. just in mm -hmm. different angles. Yeah, and, and and see those those people that was uh, close to him in this project and was kind of believing what he was saying up to this point. I just wish they would have saw this like months ago. Yeah, the person he is, even the whole operation of the culture nerd. Because I know, um, you said you were GWW. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know the. I know the backstory now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, GWW, they kind of lumped me with him because I was with Culture Nerd, and so I haven't really got to even know anyone really from GWW because I was affiliated with Lifecast and Culture Nerd, right? So that's just how that works I'm on gonna... social media because of Lifecast. You, you knew, and it's like, and again, this is me. When, when I got with Lifecast and started my channel, again, I was like less than 100 subs. You know, I had like, what, 300 followers on Twitter. Like, I, I was, you know, just, just getting, getting started. There. Just getting started, yeah. You, you know what I mean? And so it's like when you feel like, oh, I got this crew and you're just kind of believing what they were about, then I, I became kind of the face of the culture nerd. Um, it, it seems like it, it seems like it's uh, easy to get lost in something like that because yeah. you kind of you're maybe not at the bottom. Let's not call it that because that's not what it is. We, we all have a starting. <laughs> well, you, yeah, you start. Oh, you can say the bottom, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, you know, hey, my channel's monetized now, so I can, <laughs> yes, that was the bottom when you're just starting off, man. Yeah. You know? And so, so we we all start at the bottom, and it's it's a kind of a a fair slate. So when you get into something that's bigger than yourself, right, you mm -hmm. kind of, it's easy to get lost in that and maybe overlook some things. Mm -hmm. So I feel like maybe that's what happened a little bit. Is you oh, yeah. Like, 
kind of overwhelmed maybe it was more like um because now i kind of saw the the strategy of like as was he he wants a bunch of he wanted a bunch of foot soldiers basically right and i've had experience like with marketing and things like that and so i know how to promote stuff i know how to get yeah. stuff out there and so i think he saw that and around that time too I mean, I, I don't want to say like, oh, I I know Grace Randolph. It was more of like, what? Grace wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but it was weird. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like, for some reason, for a good stretch of months, I would uh, do like a Q and A with Grace Randolph. Like I would just like <laughs> message. What just happened? <laughs> I would uh, I would like message her, like DM her. And then, dude, this this street is gonna drive me. Street guard is very weird. No, no, no. You can ask. <laughs> you can ask our producer. It's been kicking me out. Like I'm not touching anything. And oh it just wow! Boots me out. It's super distracting. Yeah, street guard is like it, it cuts me off. I, I I hardwire now, but yeah, I'm hardwired uh, as well. Yeah, but, and see, that's still, the weirdest thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Can you, you can finish. Are you good? Yeah, but yeah, with the Grace Randolph, like <laughs> for some reason, for a string of months, like right. Around the time I met like ass, I was able to, you know, kind of message Grace Randolph and we would have like a, a short QA session. Like for some reason, maybe she picked like a handful of people. Uh, you know, that's I don't know. Cool. It was cool. Like she I was kind of she got a big channel, man. So that's exactly that's dope. That's dope. So I was I was like, well, I was like in her DMs, you know, and uh, I was like, well, you know, I'll ask her about different projects, and then I would like, oh, I'm gonna make a video about this. Like Grace Randolph said this, right. Yeah, and that's how kind of how my channel, and then like I said, Culture Nerd came along. Um, and I feel like like as you know, I guess he, I don't know if he just didn't know like how much I, you know, how much I didn't know Grace Randolph. I think he thought that I knew some of her scoops, oh. uh, and that's a tactic that they come to have where they would, like they would, uh, let's say like they they would ask you like, hey, uh, you know. Uh, it's Tyler, right? Tyler, Tyler. Yes. yeah, yeah. They're like Tyler, yeah, um, yeah. We're hearing a lot of stuff about this Batfleck, and he'd be like, "Yeah, man, like my people said this about Batfleck," and then like I said, "Oh yeah, we heard the same thing, yeah, yeah," you know, <laughs> and like that's how they would, you know, steal scoop. <laughs> that's literally how they would steal. Um, and more of that angle will come out in the future because there's people they don't want to come forward now, but I kind of know where culture nerd and like has got their stories from. Some of their scoops, they 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 stole scoops and then they, they kind of added on top of it to try to make it their own, but they literally were stealing people's stories, um, people in different languages. So that's how you take advantage of people. You translate it to English oh, and make no. it your own scoop. Yeah. So some of their biggest story, so-called stories, Batfleck, which still hasn't came true yet, just to be quite honest. But um, and yes. air cut. Which I mean, still is not out. Uh, <laughs> uh, the but proof is literally. It, I mean, I get it, right? It's like mm -hmm. those, especially those two, because they were they were hard on those two. They mm -hmm. were they pushed those two, and there's no development at all that that is no. seen, right? No. Like we see Batflex stunt double on the Flash. Mm -hmm. That's a real thing. I can see that. That's cool, right? That yeah, doesn't tell I, I me that he has that a with my eyes though. All right, all right. right? That, can, that doesn't tell you that um, he has a solo movie that doesn't tell you that no no, no not at all <laughs> you know so uh, yeah yeah those were the two biggest ones that like mm -hmm. and and i mean i know like and they didn't collect super chats but um i mean they surely they were monetized uh um well they had a patreon i think they still have a patreon with the culture nerd um so they were getting money through that but um as far as like they tried to push this whole thing of nonprofit, so we must be, you know, righteous and holy to everyone because, oh my god, you, you know, we don't we don't accept super chats. But they they had ad sponsors like all the time, like yeah, you know, they they were getting money, right? Yeah. So don't you know don't fall for that. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've had I've had Matt and uh and Taylor on here before, mo like mm -hmm. multiple times. It's mm -hmm. just like I and I I considered them friends, and uh, I feel. A little bit weird like i don't know where, yeah. i don't know where to stand you know what i mean i got I, it's just like mm -hmm. he i've never had an interaction like this with with them mm -hmm. so you know um it, it's it sucks honestly it really does yeah and then i mean and then it comes down to like like with uh with taylor right you know he 
doesn't use his real name. Um, you know, there's a reason for that. You know, he used to be uh, a Marvel scooper on Reddit. And everyone's kind of done their research on that now. So it's yeah, like, of course. Um, I, mean, I, I know wh who he is. And, right. He got yeah. called out and, you know, he switched over, you know, um, to DC. All of a sudden he was the biggest Snyder fan out of nowhere. Right. Um, but I think in the fandom, we all just wanted to just believe there was hope, right, for the Snyderverse. Um, and one of their biggest stories, too, before the Batfleck and Erica was Superman will be in the black suit. Which was true, right? It was true. And yes. OG Steppenwolf, and that yeah. vindicated. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that becoming true kind of vindicated some other things that that were. It was too early to tell. Right, right. You know? But it wasn't their scoop. That's the thing. Oh, like I I know whose story that actually is. But okay. there was like still there was like because I was you know after all this came out with the you know the the the, the fan project that that we touched on um, after that fallout. I was like, okay, I'm gonna expose everything. I got like so much to like I can do like a stream a week about this, like write a book, right? <laughs> uh, and it's like, and about those scoops, I was like, okay, Lightcast is exposed. But I was like, but you know, I'm gonna expose the culture nerd as well. Um, now it's like, why you know what's the motivation? Mm -hmm. Why, you know, why am I going so hard at them? Um, uh, you know, because once mm -hmm. I found out, I went to Reddit one time. Uh, and maybe that's good or bad. I don't know. But I went to Reddit and <laughs> uh, I was just chatting with like someone in the DC group over there or something. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm a writer with the culture nerd. And they was like, what? Like, because everything was cool until I said culture nerd on Reddit. And I'm just thinking, like, man, why is all this vitriol? Like, everyone was like so upset. And like they were tagging other people in the thread. And they were just like, oh, you know, you, you know, you effing suck and culture nerd. What? And, yeah, I was like, what's going on? And like someone jumped in and said, Yeah, they doxed me. They did all kinds of stuff, like multiple people. Then like Jeremy Conrad jumped in there. I'm like, what? The He's um <laughs> a ma mana bite or something like that. He okay. jumped in there. And I'm like, what in the world? You know, uh just everyone, like uh, all these geek sites had it out for culture nerd. And I was like, something's not right. Like, it should not be this much vitriol uh you know with that yeah no no no. They're, they're... Uh, yeah 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 it should not be that much vitriol so it was very weird like it just all all i mean i'm just thinking these are all like unrelated that's crazy people and they just all swarmed just into you. that thread they, oh, they just hated that i said just immediately nerd. because you said that they yeah. turned and were like, <laughs> like no i don't like here. you now get out of <laughs> here yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what happened. Right? <laughs> I was like, well, I'm like, this isn't natural. Like, because now I, I do, um, you know, stories with, uh, you know, with Mikey Sutton. Uh, yeah, how'd you, how'd you meet Mikey? Weird, right? Um, <laughs> I now, was, now, uh, I'm yeah. not, I'm not like, Are you cool? do, yeah, I'm just, how did you, yeah. I'm not to like change the subject like that. No, but, you're cool. I'm, I'm um, sure we can jump, yeah, we yeah. can jump all around this. Um, no, right when, kind of like, it's, it's kind of connected because after that Reddit incident, <laughs> I started kind of having a side eye on the culture. And I was like, because this is weird. Just this much vitriol, right? So I was like, I'm going to kind of separate, you know, I'm trying to build my own brand in this, right? Mm -hmm. So let me kind of separate. Like, we can still be cool. I really didn't voice that to anyone because they have this little inner chat group that you're in. And I didn't want to alarm anybody, like, you know. Um, and so I started doing more content, just like, just like, just regular news. Like, hey, you know, Suicide Squad's out. Let's talk. Let's yeah. do a video about that. Instead of doing about, like, oh, there's a culture nerd article. You know, instead of doing that, pumping them up, I was like, let me kind of create my own commentary. Um, and some of Mikey Sutton's people reached out to me uh, through Facebook of all places, oh, and, uh, and uh, they was like, yeah, Mikey's trying to, you know, get into podcasting and you know, and things like that, and. You know, they, uh, I mentioned one of his scoops, you know, because I was just, I was, I'm going to just cover everyone now, not yeah. just Coach Nerd. I'm going to cover right. everything. Um, I think I even did like a GWW. I don't know. It's probably like a brief story. I don't know. And so it's like they reached out to me and it was like, hey, it's like, you know, do you mind if we break one of our stories on your show? You know, and that's kind of just how it started. And I, then I, that was before I met Mikey. Then I actually met Mikey uh, as far as through a Zoom call. And uh -huh. um, he was like, dude, let's do a show together. Let's just do it. You know, yeah. um, and so yeah, it's just literally just yeah. They saw some of my videos talking about their their outlet, and they reached out to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean that that it's 
that like you said the, the connection and the networking and, and stuff like that um i mean like and then that's where it all came from right so i personally uh we started our channel probably well 10 months ago and um you know we had i think we did like a snyder cut month where we kind of like grabbed a bunch of people so mm -hmm. we grabbed ray porter uh lightcast film junkie the nerd queens uh geez i can't remember uh sean o'connell uh and it, it, that might be it I don't, I don't remember it was like our first like interview month it's a good group yeah. yeah it was a good group of people just to talk to and like kind of like get to know everyone because we were still new we were only three months old or yeah mm -hmm. september october november we did it in november mm -hmm. so we we're only three months old and we that's when we kind of like we're like all right let's go meet some people and talk to mm -hmm. some people that are in this mm -hmm. um and we kind of saw there's a good and bad side right <laughs> and and then through twitter and stuff like that like i mean you look at the release the air cut people they're trying to do an event the day before the suicide squad comes out yeah and it's like it's like a lot of toxicity that's not needed and mm -hmm. um you know it mm -hmm. sometimes it can be frustrating and and, yeah. de and it can deplete you yeah. um and I, I don't know how people wake up with that much hate in their heart <laughs> I tell you, man. I mean, the weird thing with me, like even like before, you know, well, I guess during the time I was growing my platform, I made an effort to kind of be like, I'm gonna listen to if there's two sides to the story, right? And like, we can say like there's a toxic side, but then that side that's labeled toxic, they feel the other side's toxic. Yeah. So it's like it's, it's almost like yeah, it's almost like I can't put my whole energy in like what's you know, I just go off of you know personal conversation so like right now like um like i'm mutuals like with like with wonder meg um mm -hmm. and then i'm mutuals like with um uh like mr west ashley a lot of people don't like him you know um but oh yeah I, it was the other day you got some hate I saw yeah that. I saw yeah that. and it's like I, you know i i feel like you know if I'm following someone, I, I I can't really answer for their actions. You know, what I mean? no, like, that's a whole different story. <laughs> you know, a whole what I mean? different story. And so, like, because I, I, I was on his show, like when I was kind of making my rounds at first, trying to you know get my my platform out there, and I looked at, hey, whoever whoever's showing me love, you know, I'm gonna kind of you know reciprocate that. And so, like, Meg was one of the first people that you know was just kind of chatting with me on Twitter about the you know the fandom and stuff like that. And I was like, I never had a problem with her, right? And, and then, cool but but then the other side, they're like, you know, they, they got all these problems, you know, uh, uh, about her. And I was like, dude, I tell them all the time, I was like, I've never had a problem with, with her. Um, and then the, the same thing with Mr. West Ashley, people say a lot of stuff about him. Now, they may not like some of the slogans that he put out there, but um, <laughs> one on one, just like man to man, I have no problem with him, right? So mm -hmm. I'm just like, well, I'm just gonna kind of just do me, like. If people are kind of mad at you know I'm following them, then eh, I don't know. What. I guess that's their <laughs> yeah, personal that's their issue, I suppose. But my platform, you know, if I could have anyone on my show, like I've had, if you want to say both sides, I've had both sides on my on my uh, channel not at the same time. Never, never at the same time. <laughs> but, yeah, you don't want to be the uh, you don't want to be the internet research agency. In Russia, exactly. Setting up, setting up each side to be just batter each other. Yeah, yeah. Though it kind of. In a weird way, it kind of happened one time. Um, it was with that, that totally the, the two groups, but I used to do streams with Jonita Davis a few times. Um, Multiversity. Familiar. Oh, Multiversity. Okay. Yeah. So I did a show with her. Um, and one day I had a setup for her to do the show. She said she couldn't make it. So I had, I don't know if you, if you heard of uh, Ascended Ancient, I have, uh, yeah. the, the famous leaker, right? Um, and he's very controversial on Twitter. He knows it whenever he sees this. He, you know that you, you do stuff on purpose. Uh, and so <laughs> I never had a problem with him either. I haven't either. Like me and him yeah. are actually cool, but I know he triggers people. I know he does on purpose, right? And so and he knows it too. And so um him and Jonita had a little riff, you know, they just didn't like each other on Twitter, right? And so Jonita couldn't make it. I'd say, okay, I'm gonna get ancient in here. Um, and he came on the show, and then Jonita pops up. Oh, jeez! And I'm like, okay, oh, no. I'm like, Jonita, I did not do this on purpose. I did not do this on purpose, right? But I was like, I, I really wanted to interview her. That's after she interviewed Ray Fisher. So it was kind of back then when she did that first interview with Ray uh, last year. 
Um, and I was like, I really wanted to get her take on this. And then at the same time, Ascendant Ancient, he was one of the first people that leaked footage or pictures of Cyborg from the Snyder Cut. And so that was kind of the connection of the interview. I was like, well, this is like a, a someone that leaked the first stuff I've seen of Snyder Cut Cyborg and and before then, the movie came out. And then the person that, that, yeah. that actually interviewed it, right? So I kind of tied it together. I was going to do two separate interviews, but they both was there. So I was like, okay, let's do a mashup. The interview actually turned out really good, right? Uh, um, it was it was recorded, thankfully, so I could edit stuff. <laughs> uh, but they were actually cool that day with each other. Now that they, they have each other blocked. and They, they, they <laughs> came together for one moment yeah. in time. And, yeah. and, and it was prosperous. And then the it's, next day, they were back to hating each other. Yeah, they hate each other like immediately it. after. You know, so isn't, that's that the, the, that's, <laughs> isn't that the crazy thing about the internet? Because like you pop up and you, you're actually looking at somebody. And like they looking at you, even uh, though it's on a computer screen, you're still like, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> all right, right. And so it's crazy that that interview that's in the vaults, uh, that's in the lost tapes. Uh, after they had their rift again, I, I kind of just kind of hid the video because oh. I, I, I didn't want it. Actually, it was one of my favorite videos though, because like I was splicing in. Ascendant Ancient's pictures of Cyborg, and I was splicing in her interview and stuff like oh, that. It was, yeah, okay. It was really cool. Yeah, it was actually okay. a fun, but they hate each other now, so it's okay. <laughs> that's, nothing, that's nothing you can control. Nope. Nope. Not, control not, that. That's nothing you can control. Um, so, d dude, I mean, just to, like, just, you know, uh, so like I said, I saw the Suicide Squad. Do you think that James Gunn could uh, helm future projects in the DC world? I know you haven't mm -hmm. seen the Suicide Squad yet, but um, mm -hmm. pretending yeah. you have and pretending you like it, um, <laughs> just knowing who James Gunn is, could you see mm -hmm. him doing like a Justice League movie? I know Sean O'Connell just talked about that. Um, <laughs> kind of controversial because people are still mm -hmm. heavy into the Snyder uh, stuff. Right. Well, I mean, to, to answer that part first, I don't think James Gunn would want to do a Justice League. I, mm -hmm. I just really don't think he would even. I don't think that's his style. I mean, he turned down doing a Superman fo a film. Yep. To do Suicide Squad, I, I just don't see him doing a straightforward um, uh, Justice League. But um, just apparently from what you know, I'm hearing and my team's hearing, James Gunn, they want him to do plenty of DC stuff. Of um, yeah. Now the performance of this film, this is kind of like the weird thing because everything's on a curve now because of the pandemic and the theaters half open and um, it's hard to gauge. What's going to make this a success? success right? right. What What is success when you have HBO Max? Like what? Right. What, what is success when when you don't have an algorithm to, exactly. to judge it? Right. Like so. you can kind of like say, okay, well, Fast Nine did you know seventy million opening weekend domestic. You know, can it get close to that? You know, that's yeah. one way. You, you know, you kind of. But then again, like maybe more theaters open now than it was for Fast Nine. Exactly. So was it really a success? You know, so it's like was it a fair fight? Yeah, yeah. So, but it has a lot of buzz for this. Uh, Super. The, the critic, yeah, the critic reviews. I think it's going to do great on HBO Max. Um, so at the very least, I I can see him doing more like DC HBO Max shows. Okay. Yeah. yeah and, and and we all know that Peacemaker's coming. And uh, yep. honestly, that was a show that I wasn't excited for until I saw. <laughs> really story. see yeah. okay you're the first person because yeah i'm starting to talk to people that have seen the movie now and like the fact that you are saying like you come out of the movie and you're saying hey peacemaker then he did his job james Gunn must have did his job with you know, selling did. that character so yeah he he sold me on it because before i was like well <laughs> i don't know about i don't know about this one and then you know i saw him in action and i was like yeah i'm in on it i'm, I'm in cool. on it and then and then I mean, you'll see, you'll, I mean, you'll see how it, <laughs> how it unfolds, but, right. um, the way it will go into whatever project is what, what, whatever Peacemaker is, because mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's a prequel, a sequel, a whatever right. continuation, um, right. but the, but the movie definitely lets you know that, um, something's happening and cool. uh, it's, it's a really, it's a really fun time. And, and you know, Zach's got the Netflix thing, right? Like Zach's yeah. doing the Netflix thing. Um, I mean, did you like Army of the Dead? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love so, that film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and I, I'm not even like a zombie movie person, right? Yeah, so me either. Me either. That's honestly. what tripped me out, like, because I saw like the first little preview, 
but show he showed the opening, a snippet of the opening on on, on YouTube, uh, yep. uncensored. Uh, yeah, and I was like, wow, I was like, oh, this looks wow. Like I, you know, I, I can uh, kind of sit back, have a couple of drinks, and watch this, right? Hell and yeah. uh, I watched it, and I was like, dude, this is awesome. I'm like, I want to see a whole world of this shit now. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I'm all in with what Zach's doing with Netflix. I'm happy for him and, and, and Deborah Snyder that, you know, they could just create, you know, now if this, whenever this merger comes through with Warner Bros. Discovery, you yeah. know, if they want to, you know, reach back out to Zach and do more, that's cool. That'd probably be a year or two from now, right? Yeah. But in the meantime, hey, I want to see uh, this new Rebel Moon. Yeah. New, especially Star Wars, Zack Snyder style. Like, yes. I want to see all Give of it. me all of it. Yes. Uh, and then, and then, I mean, even things like Army of Thieves, I, I'm not, okay, I'll be completely transparent here. Army of Thieves is not something I think I want, but I don't know yet. I just don't know why they're doing a prequel that is not, like, if, if I were to do a prequel for Army of the Dead, I would do how it started, mm -hmm. right? Like, that. that's just my opinion, though. Um, and, or maybe and that's what's tied into it, though. Maybe that's yeah. Maybe potentially uh, yeah. that's what I'm hoping, because because mm -hmm. obviously uh, Dieter gets to Vegas somehow, mm -hmm. and, and 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 Army of Thieves takes place six years before Army of the Dead. So maybe the ending of the movie is like, you know, uh, like a post credit something that ties mm -hmm. in. Uh, I don't know. I just Army of Thieves. Like I saw the trailer and I was just like, all right. It's like, it looks like Fast <laughs> Nine meets Army of the Dead. You know? Right. So. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I think, and again, um, I get credit to these, you know, creators and directors like, like just how you sit, you say James Gunn is nailing, nailing it with Peacemaker, and he already said I'm gonna do a, a series. He may do a second season, yeah. but like he had that forethought to say, hey, people are going to like this character in this film, and I think with Army of the Dead, you know. Going by the the previews and the trailers, I had no you know interest in the Dieter character until I saw the movie. Yeah. You know, and then after you saw the movie, you're like, "That's a pretty cool guy, right?" Like, yeah, he, was, was, <laughs> he, he, he wasn't as useless as we thought. Exactly. I thought he was gonna be like the first one to die and yep. everything. You know, what I mean, I'm like, "This is a loser," you know. <laughs> and, you know, and then he gets out there, he's a white boy too. He really is. Yeah, yeah. I'll so be the first fun. one to say he's a, he's a wicked white boy. <laughs> <laughs> so I became a fan of that character. I was like, oh, Dieter, cool. You know, um, let's see what happens with that. And then, um, but then when you get into the movie, everyone thought, you know, hey, you know, you'll probably do a prequel with a, a Dave Bautista character or someone that's like what I that. Thought. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. But with Dieter, I was like, okay, I want to see, want to see what they got. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the Netflix deal is good. Like you said, I think the Netflix, Netflix deal is good for Zach and Deb because it's like the same thing with James, it kind of parallels it in a way. They, they kind of, so like the same way James, because in 2018, James got called, you know, called out for the tweets that he made. And I thought for sure that he was going to get canceled. Like yeah. if they were on a, they were on a war path, the internet was on a war path and they were canceling people left and right. And, and they were winning, like they weren't losing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. But James Gunn somehow come, came out of it. He was like the only guy to uncancel himself. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and but but now he has total creative control on the Suicide Squad, and now you know from a company that did the things that they did to Air and even Patty Jenkins and Snyder, mm -hmm. you know to give creative control to a guy like this is crazy. But then <laughs> you know in Netflix now, uh, Zach has got just whatever he wants he gets. Like he's like I want an Army of Thieves prequel before Army of the Dead is even out. I want it greenlit, and they're like, okay, how much money? Yeah. So, it's good to see him like just being creative again. Exactly. And that's the thing. It's like, I just, just for, I mean, goodness. I mean, we talk about mental health, like just for Zach's mental well being, I want him just to be with a, a film studio that's going to support him, right? Like, just if it takes for us to not see any more DC, Zack Snyder, and, 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 and we know that Zach and Debbie can just create and be happy after everything that happens to them. I would take that, right? Because I think they're oh, yeah. great people. You, you see what I'm saying? And so, but I feel like, you know, I think we're not only going to get that, but that there is a chance, you know, because um, I don't know if you know uh, uh, a podcaster, uh, Uche uh, Waneri. Um, he was on that that infamous uh, Geeks and Gamers stream. Oh, he's the what, football that? player, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had him on my show one time. Cool guy, cool guy, right? Um, 
he just happened to be on that that infamous thing with with Zack Snyder. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah, the, the terrible planning. Yeah, we don't have to get into the specifics with that, but because again, <laughs> I, hey, I'm cool with people, all different groups, all different dudes. But uh, yeah, that was a tough one, right? Right, right. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> but the point, <laughs> the point of me bringing that up uh, is that Uche he got a chance to talk to Zach, you know, a couple of times actually, you know, just you know, off off camera and all this yep. stuff. And Zach, he says Zach always told him the only way that Zach would do more DC. You know, with Warner Brothers, Warner Media, whatever, is that it has to be a complete regime change. That's the only way he would do it. Now, he was saying this months ago. He was saying this, uh, I'm trying to think of when, it was just earlier this year before we heard about the merger, right? Yeah. <laughs> Zach was saying that to people off camera that I'll okay. just, it has to be a complete overhaul, right? And Maybe. then we get the announcement of a merger, and then more details come out that uh, David Zaslav, the CEO That's of Discovery, yep. he's coming in and he's bringing in his crew. He's bringing in his a- execs. Yeah, and he talked uh, highly about um, building back the bridges that Warner Brothers yes. broke, which is kind of like, I know Ooh. one bridge that really needs a fixing. Yeah, because a couple bridges, right? I mean, obviously, yeah, we think Zack Snyder, I mean, we're fans of Zack Snyder, so that's one thing. But Christopher Nolan, oh, who yeah, spoke yeah. out so much about Who's them. Who's now talking with Netflix. I mean, did you see exactly. that? Um, yeah, exactly. did you see that article? Oh, Netflix is winning, man. Netflix, they nailed it. They're like, okay, it's about content. Let's get the creators. Y'all just do what y'all do. We're just going to we'll show. stay out of it. You <laughs> yeah. do what you do. Because at the end of the day, you'll never... Like, and I hate to say this, but you'll never score if you don't shoot. So Netflix does take the risks that other studios won't. Dude, they did the the Cuties movie. I mean, that should tell yeah. you right there where Netflix and it the PR on that was perfect, like pitch perfect. When everyone is the whole outcry, cancel Netflix for the Cuties. All Netflix did they put out a statement and say, "We stand behind our creators. This is artistic expression." And and I respect and that's that it. so much. Exactly. That's I how you do it. That's how I, you do it. And it blew over. That cutie thing blew over like crazy. Everyone that said they was canceling Netflix, they're back yeah, on Netflix, it, it, right? It, Netflix is like a hundred and million fucking they have subscribers. 200, 210 million. Yeah, last I time knew, I checked. It, yeah, I knew it was up in the hundred millions. I was like, Yeah, my God. Think about so that plus <laughs> let's average that at ten dollars a month. Well, what but let's be realistic, what? Tyler. People are paying at least fifteen bucks a month for Netflix. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that's so, that's why I average yeah, it. At you want to keep it like, simple? Yeah, keep it simple with the math, right? Dude, they're making bank, dude. Like they get eighteen out of me because I got the four K. I want the four K stream. Yeah, right? me too. So they, I got the premium, right? And uh, I'm a fan for life, just because. Again, just how. I mean, that cutie thing. That was one thing, but to see that response, I was like, man, that's dope. That's how you handle PR. And then it's like, hey, we're going to get Zack Snyder. We're going to get uh, The Rock, his Seven Buck production. They're doing a mm-hmm. film with Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot. Yeah. It's like, let's bring the creators here. And they're doing some DC stuff with Sandman, uh, this He-Man thing. Yeah, That's controversial. Everyone's Sweet, watching it. Sweet Tooth is technically uh, Sweet under, the, is under that umbrella, too. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and did you watch Sweet Tooth? Yes. Oh, I loved it. Oh, it was actually really good. I wasn't expecting, yeah. like... A good like I wasn't I didn't even know what I was going into it expecting. Yeah, I knew nothing I, about the character. Me either. And <laughs> and I came out of it like, damn. This was dope. The big, and they're doing the the big season black two. guy was my favorite actor. I don't know yeah, what yeah. his name is, but I forget his dude, name. He's just he the was, big black guy. He, <laughs> <laughs> he was my favorite too, part man. of that movie. I mean, those that series. Yeah. Um it was he, just a cool angle to that series like i don't know what it was like this magical thing (laughs) in that series man kind of got lost in the world (laughs) that they built and it was just like and i watched it all in one day really yeah i couldn't i couldn't stop that's awesome that's awesome i got i got hella addicted to it (laughs) (laughs) well see netflix that whole binging thing right like and it seems like they're getting away from that slowly with the have you seen the new he-man uh, uh, no, anime I series. Not. No, I recommend you watch. It's a good conversation to have when you watch it. But um, it, it's ten episodes of the He Man animated series. But they I released the controversy it. In the- yeah, yeah, they released it in two parts. So they just released part one, just five episodes. Uh, and I was like, well, I was like, I was like, maybe Netflix will start doing it, kind of breaking it up. 
because people are going to binge like you, Tyler. Yes. Uh, when something comes out, yes. we'll give you the first half and you binge it and kind of go crazy. Then give you the second half later, right? So I'm still waiting on the second half. Uh, yeah, and 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 I mean, there's a lot of I don't know if you want to call it masculine to- toxicity there, <laughs> with like because I know what happens. He man, he man's. He means really like gone. In the people, series. people should have. Yeah, people should have watched it by now. By the time they see this, they should be able to be spoiled. Uh, like know. even I know what happens just because <laughs> the team was talking about it, and I was like, all right, well, what? so it's she man this year. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> not, not quite. I mean, it's I called look at, Masters of the Universe, not He Man. Yeah, that's true, exactly, and that's the first thing. See, I, I remember the old cartoon, right? So I came into this new series like. Okay, I want some more He Man. Like you know, I remember He Man. Yeah. Uh, you get into the first episode, He Man dies. First episode and Skeletor, Spoiler. right? Spoiler, right? They both die. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like how's the show gonna go on? Thirty years, see, <laughs> and like <laughs> this is poof. They're gone, like literally poof. Um, and so I'm like, okay. Uh, and so the next couple episodes, actually, after that first episode, He Man's dead. They have like a little argument afterwards, and like episode one's over. I was like, dude, this is a lot to process. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a nap. Like, <laughs> I, I took a nap like after the first it was just so much to digest. I thought I was watching the He-Man series. No, he gets taken out. I'm like, weird. Uh, you get past a couple episodes, then you kind of see they're trying to they're setting up more. It's not uh total like woman, what do you call that? Uh you know this whole yeah. female agenda. Yeah. It's nothing like that. It, it uh, is it's actually not like not social like justice warrior. Or, no, no, no. Uh, it's not. Politically people, correctness. So I'm cool with some people. Uh, uh, Ryan Kennel. He, he does. Uh, I know him. <laughs> he does some some shocking videos, right? And like, hey, I've learned like, being as a content creator, you're a content creator. Like, I, I respect people's hustle. That's his lane. I'm like, dude, you going in on Kevin Smith every day? Yeah. Do your thing. Okay, like you know. I don't have to agree with everything. Uh, I, I'm not a huge Kevin Smith fan, honestly. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people are, but I'm not a huge Kevin Smith fan. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, I get mall rat. I mean, um, clerks and and, yeah, and mall rats the, are like cult classics, but other than that, like, I, he doesn't really have the greatest track record. Right, right. Like, yeah, like, I mean, be real and honest here. I mean, he's the one. He, he has a movie called Tusk. If you have watched it, I promise. You'll understand what I mean when I'm saying this. Like uh, he's, okay. I just can't. I'm like, ah, I. So that's why I kind of just haven't watched the He Man's show. <laughs> it's that's one me. of the things. That's like, me. if you just happen to watch it, you know, it's like. But if you really like, don't know like the, just the nostalgia of it, then it's just another show. Yeah. To you, you know what I mean. So, uh, but people can get too extreme either way. So I, I try to stay in the middle. Yeah, uh, me just, too. Just, just by nature, I just kind of, I'm like a mid level. That's what everything, like entertainment, politics, everything, right? You know, I'm just, yeah. like, uh, let me kind of see it for myself. I don't like to just kind of group myself right. in one extreme or the other. So, yeah, because, well, because it blocks you into a corner mm-hmm. and, and you don't want to mm-hmm. be in a corner, you know? Nobody puts baby in a corner. Nobody. <laughs> um, speaking of uh, animated shows, <laughs> speaking of animated shows, um, uh, one of the good ones, reference right there. That's yeah, good. I know. A little dir- dirty dancing for you. Uh, so I got recommended Invincible, and oh. I'm not an animated person. Like I, I, I like to watch live action, animated. Like I'm very particular. Uh, mm-hmm. I like a lot of things, but I'm very particular in certain areas. So animated's not really my like forte. I've watched the DC animated because they're awesome. Uh, and then someone was like, oh, you need to watch Invincible. And uh, I watched the trailer and I'm like, eh. I don't the trailer don't sell this. it. Don't sell it at all. No. And then I, someone was like, no, no, no. You really got to watch the show. Yeah. And uh, then I watched it and I fell in love with it. And now Dude. that's kind of got me like, should I watch this He-Man show? Huh. You know what I mean? Because like, well, I, I never gave things a chance when they were animated. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Yeah, Invincible. Yeah, after you see the first episode, you're hooked, right? Because like the ending is like, oh shit, like this another I'll level. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I didn't know the comics, I didn't know a lot of, of that backstory. So, um, but the animation, yeah, is a little spotty actually. Yeah, if you really look at it from an angle, He Man has some of the best animation. 
I've seen, like literally. Um, I don't know if you saw Castlevania on Netflix. I but did. The powerhouse Animation did Castlevania. They did He Man um, as well. They're also they have a deal to do um, a Tomb Raider animated series and a animated King Kong Skull Island. Like they're doing big things, man. Um, I didn't know about that King Kong one. Yeah, yeah, and so on all on Netflix, right? And so that's why they're winning. Netflix is the best <laughs> streaming platform. Uh, but no, they did great with the He Man too. Just how just how it looks. I was so upset after that first episode, but like just it looks so beautiful. <laughs> I was like, oh man. Does it like, does it did it remind you of the older series at all? Like the, like with the with the animation at all? Not the animation, like the the story style, like the first five to like eight minutes, it's all nostalgia. It's like what you remember from the old show. Then they flip it on his head and kill He-Man, right? <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, God, like there's something different. <laughs> yeah. It's such a weird thing, too, because it's like <laughs> Yeah, then he's just he's just dead. Oh yeah. my god! It's just poof. <laughs> what you say? Poof and he, poof they and he's poof, gone. They poof. They poof um, <laughs> so, so okay, yeah. So we got all that out of the way. Um, so uh, talk to me a little bit more, man. Uh, so y- you you started again, like we said. So we run mm-hmm. through it. Uh, yeah. You're you're you've made a name for yourself, right? Everyone knows, mm-hmm. or at least in the Snyder community, mm-hmm. um, yeah. everyone knows who Sill is, right? Because you've I been some so. places. Um, so why <laughs> One did way you, or another. Yeah. Why did you leave the culture nerd? Yeah, so yeah, uh, from uh, from that Reddit story. Because you went so, from writing to mm-hmm. content creating, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, it's yeah, I was start, different. Yeah, I was starting to do my content, and I was writing at the same time. Um, and so once I saw, like, just opinions of culture nerd by other people, I was just like, this is kind of weird. Like, if they're this nonprofit and doing all this good stuff. I'm like, because again, I always say, I, I take the middle of the road. I like hearing both sides of the story, actually. I'm not afraid of, um, not to like, you know, scare people with religion or something like that, but it's like, I don't, you know, I don't mind seeing like all sides of it, right? right. And middle so, ground. yeah, middle ground, middle ground. And so when I was hearing stuff about it, about them, I was like, okay, like, let me investigate it, all right? Let me look into this. Um, yeah, some storage just wasn't wasn't adding up, little by little. Um, I sort of questioned Mike Cass about it, and the way he responded was like I felt like he was hiding. He was hiding stuff. And then <clears throat> one, I think my final straw because it was just like small things, yeah, building up to a bigger story. You know, I I was under the impression that Matt wanted to make you the host of light cast originally yeah i don't know why he keeps telling people that but yeah yeah so <laughs> he, he, t- he told a lot of people that for some reason yeah well that, i mean that, <laughs> i i i wasn't even i wasn't really around when this all happened mm-hmm. or when you were even going on light cast i wasn't around you know what i mean i wasn't like we were doing our own thing yada yada and i, I wasn't mm-hmm. really watching anything because we were making things right and uh you know so i didn't really know that and then i started you know i the big episodes for like ass, like, like when they had Zach on or when they had uh, uh, Wayne on like the first time or Sam Benjamin, like I'd watch mm. those ones completely, um, mm. but, but not really like I'm busy, you know what I mean? I'm busy doing my own thing. Right, right. And uh, so I never really got to know that side of it. And I think yeah. that's why I'm naive to it. It's weird. Yeah. But yeah. Cause I mean, it's like, I mean, obviously we all want to see the good in people. I think that's the first of course, thing. Of course. We, we never want to assume um, and that's what, you know, in the beginning, that's all I was, was just kind of saying, Hey, you know, they mean, well, this is cool. And then when you start seeing like, you know, just things being stolen. Um, <clears throat> so the last straw with me was, <clears throat> uh, cause I, 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 I gotta protect certain people with certain scoops. So I can't really I hear you. I say hear you. too much oh, about certain, but one thing that, uh, that I was like, okay, this isn't cool anymore. What's going on is that. There was someone, and I'm sure the person that did this, they, it's a chance they may see this video. So they know what I mean when I say this. But uh, they drew a storyboard, just like a, a sketch. They just kind of, you know, sketched it up. You know, it was real cool. And they, and they, they occasionally would just say, hey, you know, uh, what if Zack Snyder did this huh. in the Snyderverse, right? Um, and they would post it on, I think, Vero and Instagram. Interesting. And so, and so one day, 
And this person, they was doing just, just, just honestly, you know, fan fiction. And so, all of a sudden, in this private message group that you know the culture nerd has, or you know, still has, I don't know. The way um, of communicating. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, kind of like, like a Discord. Own, yes, something like that where you come in, they kind of share their scoops or whatever, and um, plan on how to promote it uh, before a story comes out. They kind of put the information there first, right? And we chat about it. Um, they leaked that storyboard, and they got. I think I remember this actually. Yeah, the storyboard um, was kind of like the one of the last draws. Um, it was the Jim Lee storyboard. Tried to act like they had one of the original copies and things like that, but it was really a, a photo of a copy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was you know nefarious. It was it was disingenuous how they were trying to pass that off as they have some kind of insight. <laughs> no, you in a sense stole that picture, right? Yes. Um, and you decide to leak it. And I heard from people that, you know, communicates with Zach here and there. He didn't like that, no. that they leaked that. Not right? at all. Um, and that was, you know, disrespectful to, to Jim Lee, I feel as well, too. Um, Cause that was his private sketching. And then, you know, Zach, you know, did finally put the full storyboards out and it included that image, you know, in it. So, that was one thing. I was like, okay, well, how did y'all really get this image? They never would answer me. Like, they never yeah. would. And I'm just like, okay, like, I understand, like, you know, there's one thing to protect your sources. And that's one like that. thing, because I'm used to said now dealing with Mikey, like, you know, there's like a, a vault of stuff I can never say, right? I'll, I'll well, you know, legitimately get shot. Um, but it's like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I understand. That's one thing. But like, if we're just all in this chat, just, you know, you want us to disclose all of our info, right? But you're kind of withholding, you know. You're, you're, uh, yeah, you know, I, you know I, so I was like, I don't know, like this ain't the original picture, bro. And like, I remember before they ran that story, it was a group, you know, it was a room with the editors, the culture nerd, and and, and all that. Um, it was Lightcast. It was his producer, and it's not to throw anybody under, but it's his Lightcast producer. He's a cool guy. I actually just talked to him the other yeah, day. Yeah, Hussein's cool. Yeah, he's cool. And again, it's just it's just hey, it's transparency now. Um, but you know, everyone was in that group, and they was like, okay, we're gonna drop this. You know, this is Jim Lee. This gotta be Jim Lee's art. That's what the whole conversation was. So I'm like, first off, I'm like, how don't y'all know this is Jim? Like, if this is a copy that y'all have, right? Why didn't you know for sure that was Jim Lee's? Because I mean, you can look at it and see it's Jim Lee. Yeah, you just look at it. Style right? and <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you grew, I grew up on Jim Lee comics like X Men, yep. everything, right? Um, so I looked at, it, I was like, "That's Jim Lee." You think it's Easy. Jim Lee? I'm gonna message. Let's message Jim Lee. I'm just like, why are they acting like schoolgirls about this? Like, right, right. It's, it's like you stole like they, something. They <laughs> got the Holy Grail and like <laughs> and <they're laughs> <it> somewhere. <laughs> and so they was like, "We're gonna do an article. We're gonna we're gonna throw it out there, right?" And um, before they did that, I was like, dude, I was like, y'all may want to put a spoiler warning, yeah, before y'all throw this out there. They go, oh, yeah, yeah, good idea. I'm thinking to myself, why aren't y'all thinking about this stuff before you're like, what are y'all yeah. doing, right? Um, and so after the fact, I found that they they put out that picture because they found out other people in the fandom had a copy of it. Uh, Stephen Colbert mm. called Colbert. Had a had a copy of it. I think Film Junkie had a or saw a copy of it. They wanted to beat them to the punch, so somehow they snapshot us. It was a stolen picture, mm -hmm. and they wanted to one up the fandom, right? And and that's been a narrative with Lightcast uh, and Culture Nerd is wanting to ingratiate themselves to the fandom to take advantage of the fandom. You know, that's literally what they were doing. So once that happened, and all of a sudden Taylor disappeared. For like a couple weeks, I'm still doing content, so everyone's like, "Oh, you just culture nerd guy, you know? F you." Right? Yee, uh, <laughs> I talked with Chris Wong about that. I know he has feelings about yes, he that, does. and you know yeah. that's that's up to him to you know to talk about that. But you know, no no hard feelings with Chris. I mean, me and Chris really don't talk like that. But um, and and, and the, like like I said before with other groups, because they saw me with like ass and culture nerd, so they just figured, you know, that's what I'm about, right? So. Right. Um, but that is what it is. But yeah, so that was one incident where I was like, this doesn't sound cool anymore. Being it a part didn't, of this it just didn't rub you the right way. <laughs> and yeah, because everyone kind of disappeared on me. Because again, at that point, I was literally like a spokesman for the culture nerd. 
Um, so if people want to know what Taylor's thinking, Coach Dirt, they would message me if yeah. they can't reach Taylor or right. like us, right? Um, so once that happened, and then also, then I was talking about the, the friend that did the sketch on Vero. They uh, put an image of that in the message group. And the whole time I'm knowing who drew this. Okay. So this is where it got really weird. This is like, I was just like, okay, I'm really, I'm going to silently distance myself. Um, Cause like, I knew who drew this other storyboard. They put it into the group and said, yo, like, uh, this is a, this is a leaked storyboard. I think this is another storyboard. So I'm just like, I'm thinking myself, like, I've seen this picture before. Right. So I took this picture, I put it into its own message group that I have. Ha <laughs> ha. I have a separate message group. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I put it in there and the friend of mine was in that message group. And he says, dude, that's my picture. I was oh. like, really? It's like, really? Tell me more about this picture. Right? Oh. Uh, and then he's like, yeah, this one I originally posted, this and that. So I'll go back to the culture nerd group. I'm just listening to how they talk. I'm like, yeah, this is a leak. This was going to happen in the Snyder Cut. They're going to go to this nightmare world and all this is going to happen with Green Lantern right. and all this stuff, you know, stuff that just, you know, obviously didn't happen. We saw the movie now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it was going to be a big fight with Martian Manhunter. Oh, really? Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so they're just, you know, just waxing about this in the chat. And I'm and just this like, is a fan made storyboard at this point. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Did, did it even remotely look like Jim Lee's art? No, it didn't. And, okay. and, and, and it's like, hey, the guy that does art, like I said, he, he's cool. He, you know, he does it for fun. And like, it's like, it's cool, you know? Um, but he never was trying to pass it off as something. They were thinking like, oh, we can kind of leech another scoop here. Right. That's what they was thinking. Um, but then once I kind of knew the, so all I asked like as I said, I said, um, that kind of looks like a fan made storyboard to be quite honest. Now, I just casually said that. His first response was, who told you that? So it's like, it, it's yeah. a weird response. It's like, if you have something you think is true, and someone says, hey, it looks like a fan-made art, like, ah, eh, you would kind of comment on that. You won't get defensive automatically and say, who told you? Yeah, yeah. Right that, you see what I'm saying? When you I get defensive that quick, it's really I, I measured. I measured in psychology, too, so that was one thing. I never finished, but. I mean, but uh, so I read body language. I read those signs like that. So your right. first response is to get defensive. I was like, dude, this I, I can't be a part of this ruse. But just to myself, I'm thinking. And so at that moment, after the the Jim Lee storyboard, after the the fake storyboard, I was like, I'm done. After you know other inconsistencies on top of that, um, and that's the coincidence. That's exactly when Mikey Sons people reached out to me, right after that storyboard incident. Um, the fan made one, and you were just and, like, um, "I see an avenue." Yes, yes. And and I was already planning on doing distancing, so mm -hmm. it just kind of lined up. It, it just said uh, sometimes you know life can do that, right? Like it, sometimes that's how you know you you're kind of doing what you're supposed to when those doors just kind of open, right? right? Like that. So I was ready just to do just like regular news podcast, you know, yeah. uh, just talk people in the fandom, like I you know like what you're doing. That's what I envisioned doing, you know, yeah. what you're doing. And so um, once they reached out to me, I was like, okay, I kind of have an avenue. Um, so I did my first video with Gigosity. Now, before I did the first video, again, I was still in the culture nerd group and in the message group. And I said, I said, Taylor, I, I messaged Taylor separately. I said, Taylor, I was like, you know what? Like, I respect everything you do here, you know, this and that. You know, Mikey Sutton's people reached out to me. I don't want no hard feelings, you know. I don't want you to think I'm like trying to pass stories to him or something like that. I was like, you know, right, um, right, right. I just want to make sure we're all good, right? Uh, they reached out to me. I'm gonna kind of do this, right? And Taylor was just like real general. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm happy for you, you know. Yeah. Okay. Like, okay, cool, cool, all right? Um, then I separately tell Lightcast. I say, Yeah, hey, yeah, you know, you kind of introduced me to this group. Not saying I want to quit the group because I was still kind of inching away, you know. But yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, I ain't trying to like just, you know, just like, oh, you know, I'm gonna block you like on Twitter or something. Right. Uh, like, like, so. like, uh, like that previous feud. <laughs> like, geez, but right. And so <laughs> and so um and like I made a joke, like, oh, you know, um, something like uh what does he say about uh Green Lantern? Like, 
don't know if he was joking or really asking me, like, does, you know, does Mike have a scoop? I kind of laughed it off and kind of like stopped the conversation, right? So I go and do a Geekosity video. And that video is still on my channel, shameless plug. Um, it, it's about <laughs> it's about early plans. Um, the Justice League after the Flash movie. Uh, Mikey Sutton got a report. This was uh, September of last year. Okay. The plans that Hamada had for Justice League following the Flash movie. They were they wanted to reboot some things. They I wanted do remember to remember this um, this idea mm -hmm. of, a, of mm -hmm. a, after the Flash Justice League. I yeah. remember that. So I do. Yeah. Remember that. So I ran that story. Um, and now, mind you, at this time, I had about what, 100 subscribers on my channel at that time. Um, probably 90 of them was culture nerd fans, right? <laughs> so I had like 90 dislikes because oh. I did because I did <laughs> because I did a geekosity story. It wasn't quite 90, but it was a, a, a huge ratio. Um, <laughs> they hated, you know, the story. It's like it was this geekosity, was this crap, you know, things like that, right? And I'm just like, oh, it's like this is just a report. I'm just putting it out there, right? Right. You know, the funny thing um, in that report, it talked about Blue Beetle. It talked about Jaime Ray's Blue Beetle that they were doing to develop a Blue Beetle. And uh, like a couple months ago, that story was confirmed, right? So I was like, yes. oh, I got a got a confirmation in that story and all that hate. Um, and so <laughs> it's, all, it's always nice to get a uh, <laughs> like when something a silver lining. Just, yeah, we reported on something about uh, I think it was like She Hulk, mm -hmm. and we reported on it a month before it came out, and um, you know that like vindication feeling is like, all right, yeah, cool. it's, it's like cool. we was on to something, right? And, and like. Yep. That, Gives you that credibility, so I was like, "Cool, right?" So, but at that time, it's like it wasn't cool, like when it was going. <laughs> so, <laughs> I do the video, dude. And like this is literally like in a span of forty-eight hours. I do the video. At that time, the most watched video on my channel. Um, you know, you got a hundred subscribers. I had like five hundred views, which is like amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, I was like, dude, you know, like I made it, right? But like everyone hates it, and so <laughs> 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 like it's a hundred comments. On that video, like it's ridiculous, like the backlash. So I was going through that, just like just putting the video out a couple of hours hate. Um, and then Lightcast calls me that night. Now, when you say Lightcast calls you, you mean Matthew calls you, right? Yeah, because he's Lightcast. Okay. Like, don't yeah, no, no I just wanted to no I just want to make sure it's oh, said. Yeah, yeah, okay. no, yeah, you're cool. Yeah, because because he never retired, he never did all this. It's just okay, yeah. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. You're saying that he never stepped back. No, nah, no. Nah. Okay. When when he supposedly stepped back, he was still running the account. Um, I have some screenshots of conversations he was sending to me during that time when he was retired, and I know that was you know Matthew. Okay. Uh, I know how he talks. Uh, he, he's a jerk, so that, I knew that was him. <laughs> um, so <laughs> and so, um, he calls me that night, and he's like, "Dude, like." Uh man, you, you're making the culture nerd nervous. Something like first, like, why are you speaking for culture nerd? That was the first thing I was thinking. Right. That's right. that's how you know it's you know it's intertwinable. One entity, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so because <laughs> sometimes I I can't say I have proof, but sometimes I believe like has ran the culture nerd account at times too, the, the Twitter account. Okay. I know Taylor didn't always run it. Um, and I think sometimes you know, like ass did, but okay. Um, can't so, confirm it though. Can't can't confirm that, but I have a real strong indication of that. But um, <laughs> or Taylor was heavily influenced uh, by like right, right. Uh, so I don't know which, which is worse. So, <laughs> with, uh, so he calls me, and he's like, "Dude, like Coach Nerd, you're making him nervous. Like, um, you know, you're running this mic. He's like, why'd you do a video with him, dude? I'm like, man, I was like, what's the problem? Like, y'all, you know." I'm just running like this is like doing a, a, just doing a, a, thing. a like a Hollywood Reporter yeah. article. Like what what you know? And he's like, man, they, they don't trust you, dude. They don't trust you no more. I'm like, I was like, dude. I was like, honestly, I was like, I don't even care at this point, dude. I'm just gonna be quite, honest. you know. I was like, if they don't trust me after that, like you know, I don't, you know, y'all not giving me content, you know, y'all right. y'all living off two stories for like, you know, two <laughs> years. Like what? <laughs> I was like, I was like, dude, like. If y'all nervous about it, whatever. Like, I don't got to be in this group. You, right. you know what I mean? So and I kind of left it like that. Did they, did, so who, did you pull out of the group or did they take you out of it at that point? 
you know, honestly, so because they when, don't obviously they don't want all right, so they don't want their stories getting past to Mikey, <laughs> and they think that you might be an avenue for that to happen. Uh, right, right. Okay. So when when Lightcast called me, like quite honestly, I never went back to the group. Okay. So I never even tried to log back in to see. Okay. So you yeah, just, so just kind of called it quits there. I was like, because I was already one foot out. I was already one foot out. I was like, I'm just kind of inching out. I told them before I did the video, I'm going to do stuff with Gigasity. No one batted an eye. It was like, oh, whatever. I, th I guess they thought it would be trash or whatever I do, you know. Until, and until so, all of a sudden it wasn't. The, the views were, like, were Yo, there. Yo, you, you're making us nervous. You're yeah, this and that. Yeah. Okay. I think if that video would have tanked and like no one watched it, even if it was some hate watches, it was some hate views, but uh, it showed like people was looking for just, you know, just there was an avenue for this, yes. for videos like this. And so just for me as a content creator, I was like, dude, like this is like, again, this is the most success I had for one video. Right. I was right. like, dude, I'm going to start doing more of this shit, right? Right. And so. It's only natural. When, yeah. So when they said that, I'm thinking like, okay, like y'all really not, aren't helping me with content. Like everyone's still pissed off about the storyboards because of y'all. Uh I don't care if y'all upset, then I don't care. Right. You know, and so that phone call ended where I was just like, dude, like if y'all have a problem, you know, pretty much F you in the group, you know, and I hang, and I hang up. And so from there, um, all of a sudden, <laughs> the the kiss of death on Twitter is when you start realizing mass amount of people start unfollowing you. Oh, that's how you know that someone's saying something about you social media wise right wise, yeah yeah and, you know and as far as with me just kind of still you know starting my platform this is like you know what uh when i had about 400 followers at that time trying to get to 500 <laughs> yeah and all of a sudden like i just i just Drop. couldn't get to 500 like, i just kept going i was like okay like okay i see what's going on here right uh -huh. but i didn't say nothing publicly i was like i kind of see i saw my subs i was like really close to 200 subs and all of a sudden it started creeping back i was like okay Mm -hmm. So I see, you know, it's the culture nerd people, you know, uh, pulling out or saying something about me uh, behind my back, right? Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I, <clears throat> it is what it is. I didn't make no controversial video at that time, right? All of a sudden, out of the blue, probably a month after I officially left, even longer, there was a post on Twitter. Well, actually, like it's a weird thing when you go on Twitter, and sometimes people say they get nervous when they see a bunch of notifications before they click on it. Yeah. They're like, "Oh, like am I in what something? Is that? Right? <laughs> am I getting canceled?" Yeah, it's like, "What's going on?" Right? No. So I'm like seeing like twenty plus. When you see a twenty plus, you're like, "Oh, some shit went down," mm -hmm. you know. And I'm tagged in it. Um, and all I see is responses of, "Oh my god, I still did that? What? What is this?" But I couldn't see the original message. <clears throat> So shout out to Matt Jarbo. He messages me because I he's friends with Mikey too. That's how. Yeah, I I, I, I love I love Matt. Uh, Jarbo's cool. I, I yeah. disagree with most, most of what of he says, stuff, but yeah. but I'm cool. I'm cool yeah. Jarbo, right? I, I <laughs> like him because he just doesn't shut up. You know, I I like, <laughs> I like that well, part of people. Well, see Jarbo. Okay, so he he mastered what his persona is, right? Like yes. what you what you see. I know he's not like that with his kids. Like what you no. see, yeah, you no. know, and they're like. He has this like markdown, but like behind all that, that dude is like a movie aficionado. He really Jarbo is. knows so much about films, about he, the, the producers, the cinematography, the you're so the, right, yeah, key grip guy. Like Jarbo he knows a lot. He really does. Yes, he does. He but understands it's like, it, film mm -hmm. like like he understands film better than most people. Yes, yes, he does. So when he says something, it may sound like controversial, but. Part of it, yes, he's playing into that character because we we end up being characters. This is content created. It's entertainment. We, yeah, you we end up entertaining. Exactly, and so he he does it. So he's done it for so long. He gave me some of the best advice, uh, like early on with my channel. It's you so know, because um, he did too. I got yeah, that. I got yeah. advice from him as well. Um, yeah, and I know I was, he probably didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, his Jarbo's advice to me one night was, "You're spreading yourself too thin," because I was going on all these shows trying to like you know spread our name out and then i had him on one night to talk about um uh what was it uh the the, the gamer gate thing and 
afterwards we were talking after the show ended, you know how there's like a studio after like you can right. hang out after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, and he told me, he's like, you're spreading yourself too thin and you're going to end up hating doing this because you're going on all these shows. You're staying up till 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're only going to end up hating doing this because you're never, you're, you're like, your body's going to give up. Yeah. And, uh, and surely enough, like then I figured out a, a, a consistent schedule and I was exactly. like, okay. So yeah, he gave me some good advice as well. Oh yeah, Jarbo. Like I said, I mean, if people, if you know, if they get a chance to stream with Jarbo, stay after the show, you get the real Matt. You know, yeah. you get the real Matt Jarbo. And and dude is about really about helping me. He wants to see content creators kind of, you know, just kind of not make the same mistakes he did or uh, get off to a better start than he yep. did or exactly. you know stuff like that. But he is he's stuck into his niche and he does it great. Yes, but it's almost like a part of him is like giving back. But anyway, enough about the Jarbo love fest. Uh, so he, <laughs> so I'm ta- I'm ta- I no, got yeah, yeah, notific- I forgot about this. <laughs> I got these notifications right, and I'm like, oh god, like what? What happened? Everyone's flipping out about me. You know, did they steal like some of my old pictures or something like that? Oh my god! And so, <laughs> but no, uh, you get Jarbo- that nudie. <laughs> Jarbo DMs me, and he's like, dude, like. Like, you know, what the fuck's up, right? You know? And um, I was like, Jabba, I was like, I see the message, but I don't see the original message. So he sends me the screenshot. Oh, no. And it's Culture Nerd. Culture Nerd blocks me. And like Cass blocks me too. But um, it's a blocked message from the Culture Nerd. And they say, and this is this is so weird. Because by this, okay, I'm going to set this up first. Because before this message came out, everyone knew at that time and I said it live on my videos as well that I was doing more videos with Gigosity. Yeah, I'm not part of Culture Nerd. I was like, we're still cool. I pulled up one of their articles. You know, it was probably like the same haircut article. I don't know, but I pulled <laughs> up. You know, I was like, everything's cool. I think did like a Superman article, okay. and I pulled it. I was like, yeah, you know, Culture Nerd says this. And when I got that article, because this is what tipped it off, they did a Superman um, article saying he signed a contract, which is. I remember those, 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 those articles. Like it's like, dude. Okay, I do remember. That. <laughs> yeah. So he signed yeah. a new contract, right? And so when I got the article, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I, I talked with Mikey. I was like, I was like, Coach Nurse says he signed an article, uh, 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 a deal. You know, can your people look into this, Mikey? Like, yeah, maybe you could do like a, you know, you could source them, and you know, do something on top of it, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's literally what Mikey did. He sourced the culture nerd. And I'm sure I'm not going to speak for Mikey, but I know his camp had reservations about culture nerd before that. But I convinced them, you know, uh, you know, just, you know, just source them, you know, just be nice. Yeah, of course. You know, and then put put your story, you know. And so Mikey, he looked into it. He really didn't see like a, a six picture contract, what they were saying, but, um, he did say he expects to see more Henry Cavill, uh, you know, multiple cameos. You know, he said that that part is true, right. you know, and, and he's supposed to scorch a nerd. After that Geek City article, I did a stream. The next day, that message comes up uh, on Twitter. I'm blocked. And they said, um, Culture Nerd says, uh, Sil Abdul and Mikey Sutton plagiarized us. Huh. With the Superman article, uh, we've we've cut all ties with Sil Abdul. Let me tag him right here, so all y'all can go hate him. Basically, oh know? my god! <laughs> so all of a sudden, there's like a mass unfollowing and people bombing me. Yeah, and um, I'm like, what? I'm like plagiarize? Like what? That's like we if, sourced if, you, dude. <laughs> I was gonna say, okay, and and I I've never seen the article from Geekosity, however. Mm. If you did source them properly, then it's not plagiarism. <laughs> I've never seen it. I've never seen the article, so I can't. I guess I can't yeah. confirm it. But yeah. as long as they're sourced properly, it's not plagiarism. So, yeah, right. Um, to say that is really damaging. Pretty wild, right? Like, I mean, you're trying to start your platform. You know, you are. I, I understood it was still an overlap with culture nerd viewers. They started watching me because you know, hey, he was on White Cast show, right? Yeah. Um, That's all. Yeah. And so it's like that was, a, like I said, it was an overlap. And so when this happened, I'm like, okay, 
you know, it's like one or two things here, right? It's like, you know, you, you kind of just fold up because you have a small following. Mm-hmm. Um, because you can't you can't fight back against a machine, right? I was gonna say it's like it's like you know, a smaller studio fight in Disney. Exactly. Exactly. It's like what you know, what can I say, right? Like what yeah. literally can so I'm like, okay, this is you know, this is social media, this is still entertainment, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll go I go live immediately. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and oh, that no. video, that video still on still up doing ink as well. Um, it was an interesting. <laughs> I, got your, I got your Twitter here, but that's all. If you also look up Sil Abdul Inc. on yes. on YouTube, his channel does pop up, yes, and I'll definitely. include it in the video description below. Appreciate that, man. Of um, course, yeah, because that's a. Uh, it's funny because people go back, they go back to the drama videos. They're like, "What? Oh shit! Oh, like yeah. this oh, happened?" Shit. You know. And so I go live, dude, because I'm like, you know, kind of heated know, about it though. I don't know if it's like a crazy switch or, you know, it's like, I don't know what, you know, but I was like, literally, I was confused. And that's why I labeled the video confused. And I had my face on the thumbnail. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I'm going to look that up after. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic video, right? All right. So I go live and I say, yo, like, I'm blocked by the culture nerd. Like, they're saying I plagiarize. Uh, I pull up both articles. So if you ever seen that article, you'll see it in that. In that video, I pull up culture you nerd, I pull up geekosity. Yeah, I will, yeah. Really? And um, so the people in the chat, they're like, oh my god, what's happening? You know, like this <laughs> it's like reality TV, you know. Right, right. Um, and then in that culture nerd group, you know, they have their message group where they they post different videos for people to hate watch. Like one of their favorite people to hate watch was uh Garza uh Real Anarchy. Yes. Yep. Uh they, they loved you know hate watching him. Um, Cause he was the uh, one who came out and put out Taylor's last name as well after the fact, you know? So yeah, um, some yeah. of, I don't want to put this on Garza, but I, I'll just say people that I'm pretty sure they're friends with Garza. They reached out to me after the fact too, with that I, information. I love Garza. I, I mean, I, yeah. I don't love I have him. no problem. I should with say, him. I shouldn't say that. I, yeah, don't say that. I don't, <laughs> I don't have any issues with Garza and I, and I enjoy what he says sometimes. Like me and him, our only exchange was, Coincidentally, in that Reddit day, yeah. um, when I say everyone came at me about culture nerd, Garza came into that same thread as well. Like so many people came into that thread. Oh, geez, it was ridiculous. I've never even been on Reddit. <laughs> like I, I've never been on Reddit. I don't know how it works either. Dude, so I, I, I hate Reddit, especially after that. But I hate Reddit. Right? <laughs> uh, but everyone had a bone to pick, you know. What going so Garza was was a part of that as well. But so in their in the culture nerd message group, obviously they posted my video in there, and they said, "Hey, you know, let's let's go hate on Seal, right? He's like, okay. um, and so I in that video, you'll probably see. I'm pretty sure the live chat is still up on there too, but you will see the culture nerd editors. Now, mind you, before this, I've never seen them come to my videos. They never commented on any of my videos before that point. No support right. up to that point, only to come in and hate, right? So they come in there, like ass come in there, like, dude, you know, I'm about to come in there and talk to you. I'm like, dude, like, shut the what? I'm about to block you. So I, I say, yeah. oh, yeah. block, block like ass. He pops up again, different account, block like ass. Three more times. This dude has like five different burners. I have it all on tape, right? Okay. I'm like, this dude, the con man, all right? Who has five ready-made accounts like the different pictures every of him on every one of them? I'm like, okay, okay. We see what we're dealing with here, right? And so I just merely put it out there that this is the evidence that they're, they're trying to say this is plagiarism. I show that we source culture nerd. I convinced Mikey wouldn't even have sourced it. He wouldn't even talked about this subject if I didn't say, hey, let's, you know, let's make peace. Because that's really all I was trying to do uh, right. with that. Um, and so after that incident, it was a good shift. Like I said, in my content, I did one more video. The very next video I did, I labeled it the purge, uh, <laughs> which is a theme on my channel. Uh, <laughs> the purge is literally not to, to kill someone, but like to separate yourself from something, right? Um, or rid Get yourself. Get it all out there. And, yeah. And, and uh, that, that was the purge, right? Um, I laid out everything, uh, why I left. You know what I feel about it, but I still had like a glimmer of hope. But then I was like, maybe cooler heads can prevail, right? Mm-hmm. And that video was, I don't know, September of last year, October of last year. Okay. And nothing's really changed, it only got worse since then. But 
So, yeah, so th- but that's why I left, and that's why it was hard feeling since then because they directly attacked my platform. That's where the right. hard feelings that's uh, where it all developed. Uh, still remain. So I was waiting for them to literally slip up to to expose them. <laughs> yeah. And that's happening. I mean, um, that, people should be putting two and two together right now. Like, right. Lightcast disappears. Taylor disappears. Like, everyone leaves Lightcast Productions. You know, it, this is a con move, y'all. This is this is what happened. Certain people, right, in the fandom. So that's one thing, right? You gotta make yourself look like a good guy to certain people. Yes. And you'll get a favor, right? Zach is the was the favor, and Zach and Debbie they was open to you know promoting the Snyder Cut. So yeah. also on top of that, right? Uh, you know, uh, pandemic. I don't know if we can say <laughs> pandemic, <laughs> right? So they, they call it a danger <laughs> word on YouTube. Right, so right. I was like, I was like, oh. At first it was, yeah, that they were like strike a video for that. Like, yep. oh my God. Like, but I was like pandemic. So <laughs> um that opened the door to Zoom calls and you know that cameo service where people were doing these videos. It was just like a you know, a perfect storm. You know, that's how I became a content creator because of the pandemic, right? Right, right. right. So all of a sudden these actors and actresses, they're more open to doing these Zoom calls. Uh yep. you know, you can reach out to a Harry Lennox. He's trying to promote like a short film. Yeah. And you, you know, you say, hey, we'll promote your film, talk about the Snyder Cut. You know, what else is he going to do? He's, 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 he's shut down right now. He's locked in. Yep. Okay. I'll do that and get some free promotion. Yeah. You exactly. see? So that's how it was. Wayne T. Carr, awesome guy, right? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm having sure, him on tomorrow. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to actually watching yeah. that, right? Uh, and it's like, hey, this is his chance to kind of get more publicity. Like, I mean, and obviously, I know he loves a fandom. I see his yep. tweets. Yep. He's a cool dude. He's such a cool guy. You, you know what I mean? And it's like, hey, this is good exposure for him. Yeah. This is good. Like, why why wouldn't he want to show up? Easy for a pod, with, with, with a cool, you know, podcast. And you know what I mean? So I'm like, it's a perfect storm, dude. So, like, the same way you got, I mean, like you say, like, how does he get all these interviews? Why, how did you get all these interviews, Tyler? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's time and opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. You're probably persistent. You probably really. I think you're a really persistent, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or your team. Your team is. I'm just saying. Yeah. I heard some stuff about you, but yeah. uh, good stuff. Good stuff. All, all we good are. Stuff. We are persistent. Um, no, and that's how. That's how it is, man. And so the same way, um, Mike has team. Uh, Hussein is really good at you know getting in touch with people. Um, and, and again, he's a nice guy, so I'm not going to say nothing. I do like it. Hussein to be, yeah. to be on the yeah. record. I, I yeah. do like Hussein. I just, I'm saying he's I just good like, at what he, he does. How did he fit into this whole thing? How did he, like, I don't well, know if you know, how did he get behind? Because if good people are there, mm-hmm. typically good people will look at something and be like, no, I'm not. Yeah. Well, and that's one thing, because I, I do believe deep down, I, I think Hussein's a, a good guy, right? I, I really do. Of like, course. he reached out to me about a totally separate situation, you know, that I'm not going to bring up, but the point is, I I know like somewhere his heart is in the right place somewhere there, right? But I know also at the same time I know he knows like has tactics too. So it's like it's it's right. hard for me to justify like you're this good dude, but like you saw what he did to me, right? I make it personal every time because you saw what happened. You have to, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. You see, what yeah. I'm saying, but I'm that person with that unique uh, standpoint. <laughs> Where I was on the inside, and you know, I got yeah. shots on the way out, right? And so, <laughs> and, and li- li- live to talk about it, right? And so, I know he's a good guy, but I met him. Um, he got he got connected with like has um, Hussein was really active on Reddit, okay? Um, and he got connected with like as I think just like through his videos or something on some Reddit posts and things like that. So that's how they just kind of connected. And then I, I met Hussein separately from Lightcast, and then we kind of all met up at the same point. Okay. So um, he was like, yeah. So uh, Lightcast was like, yeah. I'm, and it was like after after a video, you know, you're talking to the studio. And yeah, yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm trying to get Hussein. You know, he's going to produce the show. And it was like all before all this stuff kind of blew up for him. Um, And then Hussein was like, yeah, man, like, you know, we can set up your show too, still. Like, you know, and. And do you know? So that's how me and Hussein talked before. Like he was talking about producing was, my show. Right. It was like a <clears throat> creative thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, he always seemed like a cool guy. And then once I kind of 
uh, shifted away after the the plagiarism incident. I guess that's the uh, after they yeah, accused we'll call me that of that plagiargate, <laughs> plagiargate, plagiargate. <laughs> and um, uh, Hussein actually reached out to me after that, and he was like, he was like, dude, like, and that's why I can say like I think his heart's in the right place because he was like, man, like, can we just kind of just kind of go back to like, you Damn know, man, everybody's man. cool, yeah. yeah. And I was like, dude, I was like, they they like, it's like I got shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. I'm out here in the streets getting shot right now, right? Like it's hard for me to say, "Oh, it's all good." No, because it's not all good, and it wasn't all good, right? It's, but good on to him where he was like, you know, just can we smooth this over, man? And I was like, well, you know, hopefully cooler heads will, pre will prevail. But like, as you know, continue that same narrative, and then before I really, really just like move myself away from the situation. He was trying to get me to give him uh Mikey Sutton scoops, oh, you know. Yeah. So I was like, dude, I was like, and that's when he was talking about, oh, I wanted to give you the show and yeah. you know, stuff like that. I was like, dude, I'm like, I, I want my own show. Like first right. off, right. like I'm not, I'm narcissistic like that. I'm a content driven. <laughs> <laughs> I want my name on this shit, right? Like right, I don't want right. a white cast on my name, right. but uh, <laughs> but uh, but he was just trying to say like, you know, uh, like cast knew I knew too much. And if he couldn't stamp me out, I would be a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So that that's why it was always bad blood since then, because I was still quiet the whole time. Yeah, surviving these attacks, right? Build my own audience. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, like you know, leading up to the Snyder Cut, when when Zach was dropping those teaser clips. Yep. Every day, I was doing videos every single day. Yeah. Like I literally, yeah, dude. Yep. Like that was a great time. Green. You know, for the fandom, if the you're leading green, up to the Snyder Cut was probably the best time to be yeah. a DC content creator, dude. I was doing like five videos a week, right? Yep. I was just like boom, boom, you know, knocking it out, and just the viewers was jumping up. Um, and then it really the one video that like blew up my channel like out of nowhere was when Zach did that interview with uh um, the, the Snyder Cut Brazil channel when he said Warner Bros. was blocking distribution. For the Snyder Cut, he was like, you know, mm -hmm. Zach had that clip where he said, I, I, you know, I, they don't really know what they're doing, you know, with the distribution. I'm trying to get in all these other countries. Yeah, I went live with that video and I, I sourced, you know, the Snyder Cut Brazil. And um, I'm looking up and it's like, I'm looking at the live chat, and it's like 300 people watching. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what's going on? I'm like at 200 subscribers at that point, right? Right, by, you have 100 by, extra people watching. Yeah, so, so subscribe too, by the way. Dude, and by the end of that video, like it was like I was like 400 subscribers, right? Yep. I was like, this is blowing up, dude. I was like, this is crazy. So I do I started doing all those teasers, and then it crescendoed with the Snyder Cut. Um, the um the final the like, February the the, the, was it February, the, the Valentine's Day, I think. Yeah. It was uh, yeah, it was right around that time, yeah. That trailer with the Joker when he finally showed Jared Little yep. Joker. Yep, I do that. That video goes crazy on my channel. I'm like at 800 subscribers then. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, dude. And so I was like creating doubling, my own mark. Doubling, yeah. yeah, it was just nuts, man. And like, that's why I say like, we all have benefited from the fandom. And like, you know, you find your voice and content creation, like you're doing your thing. I see other people growing. Um, and so I just, I just, you know, in a sense, you take advantage of that and you, you try to create your own, your own content. So that really made it dis distinct that, hey, you know, I'm not this culture nerd guy. I'm not this, you know, it's like I have my own platform, you know, and that's that's really all I just wanted to do, just do my own thing. And uh, it, it worked. It, it worked out. Right. So, well, I'm glad, man. I really am. I really am. Because mm -hmm. sure, yeah. um, I think I think what we all need to do is we all need to realize that the toxicity doesn't move forward. It doesn't let you move forward. It, it only holds you back. So when you promote that kind of stuff or not promote it, but, but when you feed into it, like you keep getting stuck and stuck and stuck because you can't move on. You can't move to the next thing because you're stuck with the negativity. So, right. you know, the toxicity in the fandom, uh, we've seen other fandoms break apart. Uh, the stuff we're the Star Wars, Wars community. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, if they're not more split, I mean, I couldn't tell you if that play. It's wild. I'm like a general audience member when it comes to Star Wars. Yeah, so, I feel like I am too. After seeing all that fighting, yeah, I'm general. 
I'm, not, I'm just a general audience member. I'll just take the movies and the shows. and. It's like lightsabers, you know? Yeah. I just, yeah. <laughs> Give me some space opera. Come on. I'm good, um, I'm good, is so, that personal with me? It's really not. That's the thing is I really don't care. Oh, man. Like, I don't, I don't care like I do about DC or Marvel. Like, I just don't. I'm like, all right, you want to take the, the franchise in one direction? Cool. Like, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm there for the ride. You got my ticket. Um, but, and that's the thing. The, with the Snyder family or the Snyderverse cult, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> whatever perspective you're looking in from, um, yeah. it's so much easier to, to be happy. I, I promise. It's so much easier to just smile and keep it moving. Keep it trucking. It, it really mm-hmm. is. What do they say? Mm-hmm. It takes more muscles to frown than smile. So I think we, <laughs> I think we all need to remember that, uh, especially when we're on Twitter because it's so easy to just type hate. You know? Yep. It's so yep. easy. Um but still, man, thank you for thank you, thank you for doing this. It was fun, man. Yeah, I really, had a, I had a good time actually. And uh, I mean, we really, we really never talked or met before that. Mm-hmm. And um, mm-hmm. and you popped in on that Jarbo stream, and I was just like, yeah, hey, reach out. Uh, awesome. So, so that was cool, man. And uh, we'll definitely have you back. Uh, cool. I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, I think you're a cool guy, and I definitely yeah. wanted to hear your side because that's the thing. Like you said, we all need to. Here's the part that I don't think people understand is mm-hmm. I am just like you when you say I'm in the middle. We mm-hmm. at the pop culture corner, I can't speak for GWW because I've only I you know what I mean I'm just it's just starting. Uh mm-hmm. and even that, you know, I'm I'm looking for experience, right? Not to represent anything. Um right. I'm looking for the I'm looking for the experience and and again I'm I'm looking out for this guy. Yeah. I'm looking That's out for what, this guy. If if people are honest about that, I mean, we're we're creating content because I mean, I mean, this could be the most narcissistic thing, you know. <laughs> but yeah. th- we're promoting ourselves. It's okay. I, and that's yeah. All of it, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And and I'm not afraid to admit that. that and, right, and, right. and it seems like that's the way you are as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm looking out for Too myself much. every single. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking out for myself every single day on how I can mm-hmm. improve. Um, but I also don't start drama and I don't right. feed into it. I just mm. like to hear both sides of the story and then I can conclude, right? Mm-hmm. I can, if mm-hmm. I can directly apprehend cause I could tell you it's raining outside, but you don't know it's raining until you go and look <laughs> and you see that rain. So mm-hmm. if someone tells me this is happening, I need to hear it from both sides and then mm-hmm. I, I need to get all mm-hmm. the evidence I can. And then I'll, 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 I'll then make the decision. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just be like, all right, who do I want to be associated with? All right, all right. So that's, that's just where I am personally. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. And it's yeah. like you know, like with the um, I know you're trying to wrap up, but with the with the fan, uh, uh, the fan comic thing, um, when it was shut down, you know, it was a narrative that oh, it's because it was a, a toxic fandom, you know, or a toxic side of the fandom. And I was just like, well, I was like, you know, um. The Nerd Queens and Meg, they do Justice Con, right? Yeah. They did it two and years in a row. It's hard to do. And I know for a fact there's people that will take any opportunity to, you know, to throw something negative at them. I just yep. I just know, right? In the face of that, they did two Justice Cons back to back amidst whatever hate, whatever, you know, some people didn't want them to do it, right? It's just like, why? Wow. Uh, I mean, that's just, that's just a silly, that's just social media stuff, right? But the fact that they was trying to say the motion comment, oh, because of the toxic side of the fandom, no one stopped that but the person at the top, right? And I'll just say as a side note, um, in that letter where he says, oh, you know, the studio had issues with it, or um, maybe they never had clearance to do any of this. I, it's like, I always reference the, um, an iRobot, Oh, I, love that. Like, I love Will Smith, like, man. I'm a like, huge like, Will like, Smith guy. Well, he says, ah, you got to ask the right question, right? Yeah, dude, I was like, just thinking it's about like people, <laughs> It's shit. like people. That's people so weird. The right que- yeah, they don't ask the right question. I'm, it's like. I'm yeah. not kidding with you, bro. That's so <laughs> weird that you just brought that up. I was just thinking about that scene on my walk with the dog earlier today. That's the best today. scene in the movie, actually. That's actually. Like, you're not asking the right questions. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, dude, he's like, so now, now that's that. the right question, right? It's like, but that's what in these situations people get caught up in just the theatrics of it, and this whole letter he's saying goodbye, and I'm like, why is anyone asking the right questions here, right? 
Um, but then also I kind of found out information after the fact too that uh because it, it's funny when um when you have common enemies with people, it's surprised the people that reach, you know, that reaches yeah. out to you because they saw so um, vocal. The enemy to my enemy is my friend. It's my friend, right? Exactly. So I just got stuck. I just information just stumbled across on me, right? Because it's like, oh, you hate like us here. You know, <laughs> take this. <laughs> <laughs> we saw that you hate like us. Take this. And so <laughs> Uh, maybe he didn't have clearance to start with. Maybe that was another lie that he told Andre um, that they even had clearance to do any of this stuff. You see? So it was doomed from the start, dude. It was doomed from the start. Yeah. So, I mean, but it, but it's like but when it shuts down, they say, well, people hated on it. No, that's not why I didn't make it. That would have been a silly reason to cancel this because right. you had some, some naysayers on Twitter like, I have I, every time I do a video. Look uh, how much I, the hate the Snyder Cut ad. Yeah, like people. you have people they just literally come to my video just to hate the Snyder Cut, and like once in a while I will stop and be like, "Why are you in this chat? Like my yeah. channel is all about the Snyder Cut. Why? Are, right, right. If you hate the Snyder Cut, why are you here? Yes. And that's <laughs> what know? I'm talking about. Is like I don't realize how much like I don't understand how people wake up with that much hate where they were like, <laughs> "Let me go on a YouTube channel that's talking about Snyder so I can rip Snyder apart." Just like what? Why? Why? <laughs> Crazy, so but, weird. But it's just again, that's just another another narrative that uh that like I spent where he was like they was canceling it because of the backlash of the art. No, they still could they could have literally just told people they could have just owned up to it and say, Okay, this is inspired art. Here's the artist right here. He he's just a cool kid trying to do stuff, you know, inspired by Jim Lee. You know, the, the show goes on. Right, and people still would have watched it, right? So you can't, you know, you can't pull the wool, you know, too many times over people's eyes, right? But, uh, but now I guess the semi truth is out there. He tried to say the studio stepped <laughs> in. They just, I was told, it and he never got clearance. I'll just say that. Okay. <laughs> so. Okay. Yeah. And you do need uh, I mean, these are trademark characters, guys. You know, these are these are these are owned, operated, and uh, distributed by Warner Brothers, and. You know, if you're going to do something like this, that's what I've been saying from the beginning is mm -hmm. that I was always questioning the, the legality of it um, when it came, not the legality of like the original idea, but what it came out to be. I was always like, uh, you might not do I get if I play a trailer, I get I get uh, flagged, you know, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm kind of I'm, I'm I'm not a lawyer or anything like that, but, you know, mm -hmm. I, I would definitely be interested to know more. I know that, but uh, still, man, uh, definitely stick around <laughs> after. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, but where can people find? I know I have your Twitter up mm -hmm. there. Where can people yeah. find you, and how can they interact? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Sil Abdul underscore Inc on Twitter uh, at Sil Abdul underscore Inc and YouTube Sil Abdul Inc. You can catch me there. Um, I'm also on Twitch. Still Abdul on Twitch okay. as well. We may like branch out, do some gaming a little bit. Okay. We may, you know, we may, okay. we may branch out. You know, right now I'm just kind of, I kind of do like just short discussions actually, which I didn't know there was a market for that on Twitch, but it's actually, I'm getting a little crowd over there, which is cool. Yeah, um, yeah so, we have so like, we, out. We, we're, um, we're at like the affiliate mark on Twitch. I don't know what the, I don't mm -hmm. do the Twitch, uh, Austin. And yeah, them. so you, you can get subs now. Yeah, when you yeah, have that so. affiliate mark. Then you can, you know, you can literally start, you know, doing. Honestly, sub, we, sub we we stole that too, because I was <laughs> I was uh, I was streaming the boxing on Twitch. I bought oh. the fight, um, the McGregor, not the McGregor, no, uh, that the the kid that fought uh, Floyd Mayweather. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I streamed that on Twitch, <clears throat> and then I streamed the YouTube versus TikTok fight. I bought them both, but I streamed them for free on Twitch. So I kind of stole like mad, <laughs> mad follows. Right, so right. We got there like inadvertently, but yeah, whatever. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. I admit it though. All right. So <laughs> I, I paid a hundred dollars total for for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you um, go. So yeah, now you know you can kind of do some content over there. So yeah, yeah those are the places to, to, to catch me. And um, like on Twitter, I'm using Twitter more of just like uh promotional. Uh, Cause it gets kind of crazy on Twitter, but the best way to reach me really is just through the YouTube. Uh, I do have a um, links on my channel for my Patreon. We have a Patreon only Discord that we're building okay. up as well. So that's the best way really to talk to me. 
without all the uh, toxicity of, yes. of Twitter. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. I couldn't agree more. I really couldn't. Um, but thank you to everyone who watched today or listened on, uh, on VOD guys. You truly are amazing. Um, I can't thank you guys enough, uh, especially for this month of July. Uh, you know, we raised, uh, quite a bit of money, almost five, we're almost at 500, uh, which was the goal to start, uh, our memorial charity. Um, there's some like costs that come into starting a charity. So that's kind of what this is for. Uh, and then we'll be able to help, uh, local women in Boston, um, you know, afford things that aren't covered by insurance. So that's the whole goal, the Michelle Roberts, uh, uh breast cancer tribute fund. Uh, we do it for you guys and we do it for the culture. All our links are in the description. Uh, if you can donate or send, um, or become a member, it all goes towards it. Uh, we thank you guys so much and we thank you still for, for joining us uh, nice. and <laughs> to everyone. All right. We'll see you next time.